other people do, even though you might not be on it. So, like, I remember when I was on a screen board, I could go on it. You have 20? No, I know. 20, 20, I know. There was a reference to boxes, so it was all in line with the chair. Or boxes. That's what you call the chair. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll, we'll start our process. And so with that, um, the first order is call to order, which we've just done. The second piece of business is Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item is the roll call. Councillor Baby. Present. Councillor Johnson. Here. Councillor Foley. Here. Councillor Katarina. Here. Councillor Donovan. Present. Councillor, I'm sorry, Hamill. Here. And Chairman <laughs> Hayes. This is all. Here. <laughs> we're, we're all mixed up. Here. And, and before we start, I'd just like to call out for A for effort. Um, Councillor Hamill has joined us. He was in Ireland. He flew back yesterday um, to be part of this, and he's flying back to Ireland tomorrow. So oh, that, that's, that's quite a commitment to be here this evening. So, so if I nod off, you'll know why. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to thank him for his effort in being here. Um, with that, item four is to open it up for general public comments on anything that's not on the agenda this evening. And I'll just remind everybody that we do have some rules of conduct sort of posted that we'd really like to have people just kind of look at and pay attention to. So with that, um, we will open up to general public comments. My name is Mike Durrell. I live in Portsmouth. I'm here as a reporter for FalmouthToday.me. I've done a number of uh, articles about this uh, council and the police department. I'm here to uh, make comments on uh, Sergeant Thibodeau, who was considered for a promotion to lieutenant. I've got these complaints from people on the police department. He uses the word, the N-word, constantly. He refers to people sweating like they're on a Mexican on Jeopardy. He makes numerous derogatory comments about Asians. I understand you have two Asian officers. I believe you also have one black officer. One of the Asian officers, I'm told, went to Mandrake when she was running the HR department and complained about his abusive treatment to her. Yeah, and nothing happened to it. I don't know if it went up to Mr. Hall or not, but uh, he still maintains his position as a sergeant and apparently was considered for a promotion to lieutenant. Uh, this is not something that uh, should be tolerated in this time of uh, the United States. And apparently it goes on constantly, enough so that officers who are still working for the police department call me up and complain about it. So I think. Uh, some action should be taken, some disciplinary action should be taken about conduct like this. And one final note, this is the one year anniversary when you guys had me arrested and taken to Cumberland County Jail. I think at some point you have to file a, a federal lawsuit against the town of Scarborough and the town council's members at that time. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to come up for general public comment? With that, we'll close out public comment. Next item of business is to approve the minutes for November 7th and the, the special town council meeting on November 14th. Um, so moved. Second. Any discussion or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Um, there are no adjustments to the agenda. Um, item 7 is the treasurer's warrants, which I have signed and returned to the town clerk. Um, then we will move into our order. Our first order of business is order 18070, um, a public hearing on the proposed amendment to chapter 405, the Scarborough Zoning Ordinance, section 6, definitions, affordable housing. Um, with that, Tom, is there any... Sort of introduction. We've discussed this several times, I know, and it's coming Excuse back. Me. Yes, Councilor Rowan uh, was our resident expert. Uh, yes. He was the liais longtime liaison to the Affordable Housing That's why Committee. I it. <laughs> uh, as, as I recall, this is a clarification that comes from your Housing Alliance um, and intends to uh, help provide some guidance to private developers to meet our requirements. Uh, it doesn't change the underlying standards, it's just clarifying language uh, that's been worked on for 
about a year with the committee, and so uh, we, they very much are looking forward to having this in place so they can provide assistance and guidance to developers uh, to meet the standards. So with that, um, with that introduction, is there any, anyone that would like to speak to this issue on the agenda tonight as public comments? Seeing none, we will close that discussion item out and move on to order 18080, which is the public hearing and action on the request for a special... Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, so moved. Second. Oh, it's just public hearing. Oh, it's just a public hearing. Sorry. Sorry. Um, so order 18080, um, public hearing and action on the request for a special amusement from Derek. Main Corp, did I pronounce that right? Yeah, um, right. Located on 190 Payne Road. Um, again, for introduction and discussion. Yeah, I think I'll defer to the town clerk. Uh, she's more familiar with the application. Um, the process we follow is we always, um, it's a new process, I believe the council approved about a year ago that we sent to abutters to see if there were any yeah. um, pros or cons. Um, there were none. Uh, they are not asking for any special exceptions and um, I checked with all the other departments. They have no issues either and recommend approval. I, I believe this is for a private Christmas party for the staff uh, at Scarborough Downs. So with that, with that introduction, is there anyone that would like to speak to this issue on the agenda as public comment? Seeing none, I'll close public comment and open that for move approval. Second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? It's unanimous, 7 0 vote. Thank you. Next item is old business. It's number 18063, second reading on the proposed amendments to the town of Scarborough zoning map. Um, again, a brief introduction. Are we going to turn to. Well, we do have the applicant here who pleases the council to uh, have a more detailed explanation. But as I understand it, uh, the owners of the Scarborough Downs property have acquired an abutting property and wish to have their, um, their zone extended, uh, the crossroad zone, to include this additional parcel. Would anybody like the representative to come to the podium? Or we, we've discussed this a couple times, and anybody have any questions? OK. Um, is there a motion? You should open it to public comment. Pu public comment. Open it to public comment first. Anybody would like to come up and talk to this item? Closing public comment. Move approval of the second reading. Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? Again, it was a unanimous vote. Thank you. <clears throat> um, the next item on the agenda is 18067, second reading on the proposed amendments to Chapter 405 zoning, zoning Ordinance, Section 7, Sign Regulation, Subsection J, Temporary Signs. Again, I think we have had this conversation in the past. Um, at this point in time, is there any public comment on this issue? Anybody wants to come forward? I will close public comment and open it up for a motion. So moved. Ooh, second. Is there any discussion? This is primarily conformance uh, with state regulations on the length of time that signs can be in the right of way and the information that appears on the sign. Pretty straightforward stuff. So with that, I think that's the, any other comments, discussion? If not, um, all those in favor? Again, it's unanimous, 7-0. Um, now to move on to new business, um, order 18081, act on the request to approve the downtown redevelopment plan as presented and pursuant to long form order. And I think with this, with the next three issues, they're sort of very interrelated. Um, I've asked Tom to kind of give a, a brief introduction to, to these and why we have kind of done this process. What we're, we were trying to do is really, we have always talked about these as being sort of distinct issues and not all dependent on each other. So we, we've split them out, but they are independent. Tom, can you? Yes, I'll do my best. Um, I think you've introduced it uh, very well. Yeah, over the last couple of months, we've went to, to great lengths to really help educate uh, the different components that the council is considering. Though they are uh, independent, technically, there's an interrelationship that needs to be understood and respected. 
Uh, so there are three orders, uh, the first of which, uh, 18081, uh, is the downtown redevelopment plan. That technically can stand on its own. It's a plan that uh, does not depend on any other action of council. Um, certainly it is integral to the other pieces that follow. With respect to the, uh, the creation of the tax increment financing district, uh, which is order 18082, and then the uh, adoption um, of the credit enhancement agreement, which is order 1883, there is much more interconnectedness. And uh, sitting in the front row, we do have the town attorney, Shauna Mueller, here. So to the extent uh, that she or I can, uh, or the town clerk for that matter, can assist you as we proceed, uh, we're certainly pleased to do that. Um, and uh, we'll look for the council chair to look uh, you know, for any assistance as required. Um, I know Chairman Hayes did make a request to the council to submit any uh, potential amendments in writing just as a courtesy. I'm not aware that any came forward, but nonetheless, this could, could get confusing as we proceed, so there's no harm in asking for a timeout and regrouping and making sure we're on the right track. So uh, uh, by all means, uh, call a timeout when you need it. And I guess the last piece, and I don't mean to steal the chairman's thunder, but <laughs> it is certainly the custom of this council to accept public comment on every agenda item. I have suggested for ease, because of the interrelatedness, uh, it, it should be permissible to accept comment kind of uh, on all of them at once, because I think you'll see uh, many of the comment kind of interweave uh, between all of that. So I um, hope you take that suggestion. I think that will be the easy, way, easiest way to manage the public comment. Uh, and with that, I'll, I'll stand down and available for assistance if needed. And with that, we'll open this to public comment. So anybody that would like to come up and address as the town manager, Tom, has suggested any, any of these issues, um, please come up and you know, please address us and, and we will listen to you. Good evening. My name's Art Dillon, 180 Black Point Road. Um, I'm here on two matters. Or representing two, two factions. Uh, first, I'm the current president of the Scarborough Chamber of Commerce at the uh, public comment a couple weeks ago. Um, I related that our chamber came out in support of the TIF and the CEA. Uh, we strongly recommend it and we're strongly in favor of you supporting this as well. It's, it's a big opportunity for the town. Um, I think it's very in favor of the town. Um, we're going to have a great partner with the developers and on my own behalf I'd like to echo those comments, uh, my own personal feelings. Uh, I've known the risk bearers and issues for quite a while uh, since my high school days. Um, good families, uh, we couldn't ask for a better partner to be working with. Thank you. Hi, uh, Liam Summers, Holmes Road. Um, you know, I started my career working in retail in the late 90s, and I went to work for a company called The Gap in their retail store division. <clears throat> At the time, they were a thriving retailer with thousands of stores and a very firm control of the market. Somewhere along the line, they started to do regular discounting of their products. During my five years with them, I watched as customers became so attuned to waiting for those discounts that they didn't buy full price any longer. The gap now is limping along, barely economically viable as a company. I then went to work for Timberland for seven years in their retail division and watched as their company went through a very similar retail strategy, conditioning customers to expect discounts on their products. In each case, I watched premier brands with excellent products dilute their own product and eventually their name in the industry. And they are not alone in that mode of business. We see it every day as retailers disappear. If you, as a council, believe Scarborough is a premier location, then developers will come to develop because it makes good financial sense for them to do so. If you don't believe that Scarborough is a premier location, then you have to ask yourself why and address that concern before you continue to discount and dilute the product. In the case of this TIF, my question to each of you is, do you feel that Scarborough is that premier location? As for the developer, if they truly believe that the mixed-use proposal they presented, if we give them the TIF, is really the most economically viable use of the space, then they'll build it that way regardless, regardless of the subsidy that they are asking for. If they believe that their proposal only works if they re receive millions in the form of a tax subsidy, 
then we are entering into an economic partnership that we know is not the most viable to begin with, and it requires a subsidy to keep it afloat. Not sure that that makes sense for us long term. Uh, I live in the Holmes Road area. Uh, I think I'm excited to see something happen with Scarborough Downs to develop it. I'm not against that development. I just want us to do the smart thing for the town for the long term, for both the developer to make sure that they're economically viable and for Scarborough to make sure that we're getting the best deal for our tax dollars into the future. One last point I'd like to ask. Uh, the TIF is going to impact every citizen of Scarborough for decades to come. Each of you sitting here makes a decision, but you're unlikely to be still sitting in these seats for the duration of that TIF. To ensure the best interests of Scarborough are served to the fullest extent possible, I'd ask each of you if you'd be amenable to signing a non-compete for a duration of at least five years so that if you were to leave your position on the council, you could not go and work for the developer or any establishment or a company that would have substantial financial interests in that property. That way we ensure that all the decisions that are made are for the best interests of Scarborough and Scarborough alone. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kevin Freeman. <clears throat> I live at uh, 2 Sterling Wood Drive in Scarborough off of Broad Turn Road. I, uh, I'm here as a private citizen. I am a member of the Scarborough Economic Development Corporation. Uh, and I am here to ask you to support the Scarborough Downs project, the Downs. Uh, I, I think it's a great opportunity for Scarborough. I think that spread over 30 years and with no outpouring of, of support until, you know, shovels are in the ground and, and, and actual buildings are, are put up, we're not, we're not giving them any TIF. Um, I think that every community uses TIFs, and we would be remiss not to take advantage of this opportunity. I think it's in your hands. We've been talking about this since late summer. Uh, on the SEDCO board, we were first introduced to it in January, and I'm sure that you councillors have, have all seen all the materials for a long time. I don't think we're rushing into this. Um, with that being said, uh, I'm a businessman, uh, I work in the construction industry, it is a tool that is used to make <clears throat> projects happen, uh, and uh, I would urge you to uh, support the project tonight. Thank you. Good evening, my name is John David Dittmer, and I live at 11 Woodside Drive. Um, Many people have seen me before as uh, running for town council, and it's part of that was doing a lot of research on this project. I talked with town council, I talked with planning board, I talked with the developers, and I asked myself two questions. And I've answered those questions for myself, and I'd like the council to consider them. The first question in is, is this a good deal? When we look at it, developer is not asking for any money up front. They're only asking to be repaid for infrastructure that they are bringing to the table. It's the same thing as saying, we will build your roads for you, and you can pay 40% of the cost of it over 30 years. If you got that deal, you would take it. But you'd say, what's the catch? Well, the catch is the developer wants to build around that. And I think that that's what the developer is going to do. The developer does not make any money if they don't build. People have asked questions, well, what if the economy turns down? And that was my first question uh, to Rocky. And he said, we slow down. We don't, we don't make any money, but we're not going to put ourselves out there to lose money. But they're not going to make money off the tip if they don't build. It's in their best interest to build. They build the tax base goes up, they get a cut of it, but they're paying for their infrastructure and not making huge profits off of it. Now the second question I ask myself is, what happens if we turn this down? And I think that, one, the town no longer has a, a say in the management of the project, because no longer are we a partner 
Now we're kind of an overseer. And I think that that would be very bad for the town. More importantly, I think it would send a very negative message to the business community. Those are the people who are looking to invest in Scarborough. And we've already had that happen because we have drawn this out over months while towns like Westbrook were doing, able to do it in 30 days. We are competing with Westbrook. They are our competitors. They have the 95 corridor, we have the 95 corridor. They have lots of land, we have lots of land. So if a business is looking to move to some place, and those businesses are what makes our taxes go down, we've got to say we need to look at not competing with ourselves, but competing with our actual competitors, the other towns. I strongly urge you to pass these three motions and approve the TIF. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the council, and Mr. Manager for the opportunity to speak to you this evening. My name is Michael Foley, and I'm a city councilor in the city of Westbrook. I didn't plan to follow the speaker and his comments <laughs> regarding the city this evening, but you'd be surprised to, to find someone like myself here potentially speaking in favor of what may be a competing project. They are, have, um, they are competing in some areas, but they are also uh, different in many. But I come here to speak on, about the developer. The developer came to Westbrook and did a significant residential development, one of the largest residential developments that Westbrook had seen in decades. And they displayed the utmost professionalism to work with residents and to work with the council members and to work with the community to, to come up with a project that worked well for everyone. They were faced with what I think may be worse challenges than they've been faced here with things such as moratoriums, building moratoriums, impact fees, things like that that may have been more challenging uh, to work around. And, and we persevered, but they came to Westbrook to work together with people. And their partners are also uh, partners in the project that they had in Westbrook. And they're, they're not a developer to just come in and build and hit the road like some developers do. They're invested in these communities. In the Blue Spruce Farm neighborhood, they recently had a block party to celebrate the end of construction. And they invested money in that party and provided supplies and food for neighbors of both their apartments and uh, the people who owned homes there. Normal developers don't do that. You don't hear about that happening in Portland. You don't hear about that happening in other communities. And I've been serving my community for 15 years and have seen many, many, many developers come and go. And they're invested for the long term. So I think having a partner like the Risberas and having a, being a partner with the town of Scarborough is an important thing. Tax increment financing districts, as this prior speaker mentioned, are used all over this region. And I think it's a win-win for our region as a whole for us to approve tax increment financing districts. The nuts and bolts of them are very complicated and people struggle with them, but it's actually a win-win for the town and the developer. In the, in the growing county budget that we see every year, this shelters this growth and this tax from the county budget. In the growing reductions of state aid to education that we see, this shelters that growth and development from those um, impacts and figures. And those are wins for the town of Scarborough. This growth and development is not going to affect the town of Scarborough's state aid to education or their county tax. It's going to be a benefit to those. And so I, I hope and encourage the council this evening to support um, this project as a whole. I think it'll be a win-win for our region. And I look forward to uh, seeing Scarborough be successful with this project. Thank you for the time this evening. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, Carol Gotro, Jamico Mill Road, and in Scarborough. Uh, I believe that uh, this project could be uh, extremely beneficial to the town of Scarborough. The points I would like to make tonight are uh, I'd like to see it be a win-win. I'd like to see all of the activities be balanced. Um, and I know the town council, or I feel the town council has been somewhat pressured to let's get going on this thing. It's been so long. Uh, back when we were at the racetrack, Rocco was saying, everything's taking too much time. You guys are too slow. Well, I think, you know, just like a fine wine, uh, we've got to do this right. So. My, point, my points tonight are not to 
put the project down at all. My points tonight in speaking to the town council are to please make a good decision with your vote. The Downs developers have invested $6 million thereabouts in the proposed TIF district property. We're being asked to support that development with a potential $80 million in tax credit. So we're in this big time. I'm asking the town council and the down developers to remove the 40% residential tax revenue that's given back to the, to the town council, uh, to the developer, I'm sorry, uh, from the agreement. Single family homes currently do not cover their costs to the town by about $1,100 per home. Add to that the 40% that is given to the developer we would now be in the red by about $3,000 per home in the TIF district. If any TC member is on the fence about voting yes or no, then vote contingent upon the agreement being equally fair, equally fair to the taxpayers and build in controls that sustain the cost <coughs> of services going forward, plus produce a favorable revenue stream through the 10, 20, and 30 year periods. So I'm sure there are some of you that are on the fence, but build some qualifications into your vote. It doesn't have to be a yes or a no. It can be a yes with contingencies, and it can be a no with contingencies. And I'm sure the developers here tonight are used to negotiating, and I'm not too sure how much pushback has been done, but I'm not saying pushback for the sake of pushback. Recognize where the money is not gonna come forward, and the money is not gonna come forward from residential homes. That component should be taken right out of the equation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, Dennis Meehan, 28 Jamaica Mill Road. This keeps happening to these meetings. Um, <laughs> So I'm here today, so I've, I've done some research on these TIFs districts. I've worked with people in commercial development before, and there's really two ways a town can urge development. One is you can bond land and bond money to build infrastructure like we did at Hakus Parkway. And then recession hits, and then you're stuck with that money and that debt. The other way is to use TIFs districts and work with a developer to help create some of those opportunities. With, in this case, the town is not at risk, per se, for upfront money. We're looking at a very long build, 30 years. There's going to be recessions. There are going to be economic upturns, downturns, <coughs> schools. Everything is going to change in the time of this period. But you have a partner, an opportunity, with a group of developers who are from this town. They're not the seven or eight people from other states that have walked in here and tried to come into Scarborough, get a good deal, make money, and then go back to Massachusetts or Connecticut or wherever else they've been from. These people are trying to build something with their company that I think is admirable because if you look at the Michos and Riz Bar as they are now, they're probably not going to be running the company in 30 years when this thing's done, right? It's going to be passed on to the next set of leaders in their companies and the developers to work with and to have an opportunity for a partner who can work with you because I'm sure at some point in this time, one of you is going to come together and say, we need to look at some of these things. Things have changed, but you can make amendments to your agreement together in some ways. So I think there's just a real opportunity here and this is a safer way for the town to turn around than other ways we've done in the past in terms of bonding money and building infrastructure ourselves. And I really think that you've got the right partner in um, the Riz Bars and Michos. So I urge you to please vote for this opportunity. Thank you. Third and final, Jamaico Mill Road resident here. Dave Merrill, 29 Jamaico Mill Road. <clears throat> uh, I'm a taxpayer and a longtime volunteer on many of the committees that have been uh, talking about this, uh, uh, this topic, this, this location, this project, and these developers. Um, I'm completely in support of this. Uh, I have studied it up and down. Uh, I've been um, in many, as I say, many of the discussions going back 18 years uh, on this property. Uh, I hope there's the same support on the board. Uh, I, I believe there is, but uh, I want to reinforce and hammer this down. 
uh, just an incredible opportunity, uh, one that I don't see we can give up. Uh, turning this down would um, really put us in a sad state in terms of uh, what do we do with this property. Uh, we give it up to somebody else or we let the Risberas develop it in their, their most um, simple and their most direct way to accomplish a goal. Uh, that uh, might not have the town's best interest in its, in its uh, sites. Um, if, we, if we do it as a mixed-use project uh, with town's input, I think that's a win-win, as we've said all night long. Um, a couple of the things that, that come to my mind as we do this and as in the construction and the planning uh, industry, uh, it concentrates our services in the center of town. Uh, people on the west side of the turnpike, uh, don't see as much development. And I know we want to save the farmland out there. Uh, I would like to see us concentrate our services and thus reduce our taxes in the center of town. Uh, it gives us another potential north-south route through the center of town. Uh, I, would, I would love to see an east-west route, but I don't think that's possible. But it does help with our traffic as we go from north to south uh, and avoid some of the, uh, the buildup that's happening on Route 114. Uh, it's a trigger to development around the perimeter. I don't know how much that has been spoken of, uh, but uh, once this development gets going, it's only going to benefit the area around the Dallas <coughs> Oak Hill, Payne Road, and the Haggis Parkway. Uh, it will be a well-suited complement to Oak Hill. Uh, the things that Oak Hill do not provide right now, the Downs could. Uh, and I think that's, that's worth, worth saying. Lastly, um, it's, this is a wise and efficient way to develop a town. Uh, it concentrates our services, as I've said, uh, gives the town ample opportunity to speak in the process, uh, which we would otherwise lose if this is turned down or we find another avenue to develop the property. So I hope we have your support tonight, and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Tim Boardman. I'm a local business owner in the town, and I just want to be here and give our support to the TIF project and um, back the developers. I think this is smart planning. Uh, we have a unique opportunity, and um, I just want to echo everything that everyone else has said that supports this project. Um, it's very important to the town. We have one chance to get it right. I think the way that the TIF has been um, spelled out in the plan it makes sense um, the mixed use is good for our tax base where we have more commercial more industrial which doesn't um, put a heavy burden on our tax um, payments to the town um, as opposed to more residential buildings um, we support this I hope that the council supports this and I thank everyone else that's been in favor of it and um, I think the Risperas are a great partner for this project <coughs> Thank you. Good evening. Uh, Rocky Risperra, Crossroads Holdings, also a Black Point Road. Um, for as long as we can remember, residents of the town have been talking about the future of the Downs. Uh, the town itself started planning for its possible redevelopment nearly 20 years ago. It's important to note that because a lot of work uh, by residents and municipal leaders uh, has been poured into this project over the years. Since the early 2000s, the Downs property has been under contract 17 times but never closed. This was mostly due to the fact that most developers looked at that as a casino play, uh, and that was the center of most of their development plans. In 2006, the town adopted the current comprehensive plan that plan, in that plan, the Downs property was recognized as the best location for future growth. The plan also stated that a TIF would likely be needed to achieve the desired build-out. 2013, the Downs was uniquely rezoned. The crossroads zone calls for a dense, well-planned, mixed-use build-out. In January of 2018, my partners and I, Crossroads Holdings LLC, purchased the property we did with the intent of building it out to its highest and best use. We used the 2006 comp plan, 2013 zoning ordinance, information gathered from various community meetings as a guide for our master plan. In April, we started talking to the town about creating a TIF district and a CEA for the Downs. Since then, we have worked diligently to assist the town 
in creating the TIP district and also the CEA that a CEA that would do what we needed it to do to make the project su successful for not only us but the town. We have spent countless hours over the last 11 months working on this. We've uh, held or participated in 11 public informational meetings. Uh, there have been hundreds of uh, people have shown up to these meetings and discussions have been had since August. Uh, the council has received comments and feedback and so have we. There have been hundreds of emails sent and we've read every one as I know all of you have as well. And we've tried to incorporate uh, a lot of that information into our uh, credit enhancement agreement. Uh, at the no November 7th public hearing, we were humbled by the fact that we had over 20 people speak in support of our project. We've had three key endorsements from SEDCO, Scarborough Community Chamber of Commerce, and the Portland Regional Chamber of Commerce. They've all endorsed our project, and they've endorsed the TIF and the CEA as proposed. Uh, from day one, our team has said that we want to do this right. And to us, that means delivering a master plan that aligns with the comp plan. It means <coughs> fixing the mix in the town and to help offset the burden that residential taxpayers <coughs> have long carried creating a place that our kids and future generations are proud of. A 7-0 vote on the TIF and the CEA from the council tonight would show that Scarborough is open for business and that the town is truly a partner in the success of the Downs. I truly hope you will vote affirmatively and move forward so we can move forward with this project and be successful with it. Thank you. Good evening. My name is uh, Barry Tibbetts and I live at uh, 12 Berry Road. Um, I just wanted to make a couple comments. Uh, first, I, I think that the um, project is really a good project. Um, I've been in municipal government for many years, retired, and, and I've read through the documents and the documents are balanced. You're not giving away a lot. Um, compared to a lot of other TIFs out there, I think you did, a, you did a really fine job in pulling it together. I don't think the terms of 30 years is, is there's, no, there's nothing wrong with that. that. That's perfectly within the confines of the law, but that's standard. Um, and, and I just want to echo something that uh, Rocco just mentioned. That I've, I've lived here for four, over 40 years. My family owns a lot of properties. Um, I have no connection to uh, this developer or anything associated with it. I will say my brother does own some business property within the district that would be created, uh, but he doesn't stand to gain anything from creating the district. But um, w what I want to mention is that um, the Downs over the years has had a lot of talk about developers coming in and doing something and has never come to fruition. And the reason is because the resources weren't there and the right players weren't there, and I think you have that here. Um, and when you see that kind of opportunity, I, I think it's worth your consideration to, to move forward with it. I will say on a couple of the tests that I did in, in the community where I served, um, we had one CEA that we did, and over 60% of the units in that uh, development were residential. So that's not uncommon, so don't be afraid of that. I mean, that, like I said, I th what you have laid out is very standard and very, and very balanced. Um, and lastly, I, I think from the town's perspective and growth and long-term vision of, of the community, the TIF gives is really the only economic development tool that a <coughs> municipality has. And when you don't have that, you are in, in essence cutting yourself short from being successful going forward in the future. And by creating the district, the downtown district, creating the TIF and using some of the funds from that TIF for your downtown development and district, you will see tremendous changes come about in your community. I should say in our community. I mean, I've lived here for, like I said, for over 40 years. I, I think it's, it's at the right time, the right place. You've got all the right pieces to the puzzle. This is a, this is a slam dunk win for the, for the town. So I uh, encourage you to support it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would anybody else like to come forward? With that, we'll close public comment and move on to, is there, a, is there a motion to? Move approval of order number 18-081. Second. All those in favor? Discussion? Uh, discussion. Discussion. Yeah, discussion, sorry. Yeah. Any discussion from? I, I think I'll save, save my remarks for the last one because I think that's where probably most people would like to speak. 
I have some thoughts on that, but not. <coughs> sorry. Any other discussion, comments? Council? Yeah, sorry, sorry. Jim, okay. Council Hamill? Council Hamill? Uh, yeah. uh, I had a, a question, you know, in the first order, it talks about the, uh, uh, the downtown tax increment financing act requiring the district to, um, to adopt uh, the downtown redevelopment plan. So does that, that replaces a prior plan? Is that what happened? You know, this is a, a new piece. You know, we've had TIFs, uh, the TIF and the CEA has been before us previously. But, um, and, and especially the language in there about the comprehensive plan, does that mean that basically by a, adopting this development plan that was put forward by the Downs, does that replace the town's comprehensive plan? I wonder if uh, it permitted to the chair if either Karen Martin or Sean New York could speak to that. This plan doesn't replace the comprehensive plan, but it is um, similar to those plans um, that we've done before, like the Oak Hill pedestrian study and other types of um, really sub uh, town level plans. What we probably would do, though, is um, incorporate um, the ideas from that plan in um, the update that's coming up with the 2018 plan, although what I would say is almost everything or everything in that plan um, was contained in a previous study or is already in the 2018 update, uh, but it does not replace the comprehensive plan. But, but it, could be, it would become part of it, is what you're saying? It can be. It, we, we can treat it that way, but it's a standalone. The adoption process that you would do tonight is, or the acceptance that you would do tonight, is can stand alone. Its sole purpose really was to um, enable the town's ability to do a downtown TIF. And legally, I, I would let Shauna speak if she wants to speak to that, but um, that's really part of what we're doing. And that's why we pulled from the existing plans. Yes, um, I was wondering through the chair, Ms. Martin, I, I think, can you um, provide an overview for everyone, a refresher on what this um, downtown development plan is? Because it was also mentioned in Mr. Hamill's comment that it was something proposed by the developer and it's not something that the town created. And I think Correct. it needs to be some context given properly before we get too far into the conversation. Absolutely. Um, we did ask the Downs to provide certain um, uh, uh, commentary or um, uh, details that we didn't have. We used some of their pictures and those types of, of um, illustrations in the plan. Um, but this is something that the town is putting together. I wrote um, the majority of the plan with input from uh, the planning department and with some uh, input from uh, Mr. Bacon with the uh, uh, Downs team. Uh, but it really was a, an attempt to um, pull all the existing information that we had about Oak Hill and about what the Downs uh, team was proposing and put it all in one document. I think one of the things that we've seen is um, we've talked about the Downs um, in terms of their master plan and um, the documents that they've either gone through with the planning board or they've presented at the um, various uh, public meetings. This was an attempt to lay that out, incorporate those ideas, and put them you know, in a plan. But what the plan does do at the end is say, here are the concepts, here are the, the strategies that have been um, discussed in that plan, and it, the town may want to consider um, adopting a TIF or, um, in the case of the Downs, consider doing a um, credit enhancement agreement. And that has to be in the plan in order to take that next step um, of doing either the district and or a, a credit enhancement agreement. Can I have a follow-up? Can you also explain the statutory requirement for the plan and the submission to the state for its approval and why it's important? Sure, so the, the plan is um, required as part of the state's um, uh, it's required um, in order to be able to adopt a tax incre increment financing district that has a downtown designation. Um, to your question, 
other TIFs and other credit enhancement agreements that we've done in the past didn't require this because they were not um, designated under the downtown district category. Um, in order to do the downtown district category, this plan was mandated. Um, and in the plan, you have to at least um, acknowledge all the things that you might have um, that you might be authorizing in the TIF. Um, so that's where that, that's the linkage between the two. Um, but for our seeking of a downtown designation, we probably would not have done this. Um, but that's, that's how it's linked together. And that's why it doesn't exist for the other types of TIFs and credit enhancement agreements that we've done. So does, does that document that you've described, um, the downtown redevelopment plan, that's what's referred to in Exhibit H of the TIF? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'm all set. Thank you. And Councilor, actually, similar to what uh, Councillor Brabine just asked, but to be clear, this was essentially created to for the application to the state. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I was just going to say earlier that the Long Range Planning Committee has looked at this at length. So, you know, this isn't anything new to those of us who've been involved with long range planning. Um, it's been out there, it's been vetted, it's been discussed, and I'm going to save most of my comments again for the third uh, motion. But I did want to let the public know that long range planning has also looked at this. So, any other questions for? Karen Martin. Council Donovan. Uh, if I may direct a question to um, uh, Karen Martin. Uh, <clears throat> the downtown TIF framework that we used, why did we choose that? Sure. We chose the downtown TIF after looking at um, several different uh, uh, iterations of looking at or possibilities for um, designated designating a TIF and um, the ability to do a credit enhancement agreement should the council choose. The reason we chose the downtown designation is it provided more flexibility than um, a traditional TIF. Number one, we are not subject to any of the acreage uh, requirements. Um, communities can only uh, designate a certain amount of acreage within their community in TIF districts. Um, downtown TIFs are exempt from that. Um, so that was one of the primary uh, reasons we wanted to do it. There's also a financing piece um, with respect to, um, or not financing piece, but a, um, a aspect of the downtown TIF that would allow a community, should they choose, um, to work with the developer and actually um, have uh, some municipal uses within that district. You can't, the municipality can't own property um, but it could lease under a downtown TIF. That's not allowed in other uh, types of TIFs. We chose that to preserve our um, ability to do that should the community choose um, to pursue that, that opportunity. Uh, so those are the two major reasons why we did it. For a development like a community center? Exactly, exactly. Thank so you. without the downtown designation, there would be no possibility of partnering with um, the developer on doing a community center. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Karen? <coughs> this might speak to the second order, but is there a reason, a specific reason why a municipal campus is included in the downtown TIF district? Yes. Um, the reason we included the municipal campus is that's the um, glue that sort of holds a, the downtown together. We really felt like, um, you know, in demonstrating to the state that we are putting together a comprehensive approach to downtown that we really needed the municipal center. That's the, that's the activity center of the community. And so what you see is you've got the municipal campus in the center, you've got Oak Hill flanking it to one side, and you've got the downs to the other, and it really provides that central glue of creating um, what we often think of as a downtown area. Any, any additional questions for, for Karen Martin? Are there any economic reasons for including the municipal campus in the downtown TIF, TIF district for future spending money or like, so what I heard was aesthetically it looks good. Is that, is that the rationale behind? It's aesthetically, but it's also the, 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 um, the social 
and uh, community connections. A downtown is your central area where people gather and come together, and that's really part of that downtown uh, definition that the state has put forward. So what we're really doing is saying to the, to the state, when they look at this, um, you know, Scarborough's downtown doesn't look like other downtowns. And, but we are trying to develop an area that is both civically oriented and um, contains many of our central commercial development. Um, so again, that's bringing, it's tying Oak Hill and the Downs together. So it helps fit the definition of the downtown it does. with the state application? It really does. Okay. We, and we did debate that. We talked sure. about it um, you know, a couple of different ways. If it would help, I could read that statutory mm -hmm. definition. Uh, so it says, and I quote, this is from statute, downtown means the traditional business center district of a community that has served as a center of socioeconomic interaction in the community characterized by a cohesive core of commercial and mixed-use buildings often interspersed with civic and religious and residential buildings and public spaces that are typically arranged along a main street, intersecting side streets, and served by public infrastructure. So we really thought that the activity happening on this campus really kind of uh, fulfilled that, uh, not just in spirit, but in meaning. Right. Any other questions for, for Karen? <coughs> um, Shauna, can I ask you to come up? And And I know this is all confusing, and I'm very confused about all this, but if, 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 in these three, there's three distinct things here, but there are some distinct differences, and I'll probably completely blotch this, but maybe you could help guide us. As I understand it, Order 1881, which is this downtown redevelopment plan, and Order 18082, which really talks about the, the, the TIF, the, the tax district itself, as I understand it, that's kind of a living, breathing document in the concept that future councils could make adjustments to that as time goes on. Is, is, and then Order 18083, which is the actual CEA itself, that can only be changed by mutual consent between the two parties. Is that a fair representation of how these three, two of them are, are similar, that town council can control and change as live and breathe over the next 30 years? versus a CEA, which will be very, has to be mutually agreed to, is that? That's, that's totally accurate. The only caveat to that is that you can't do away with the TIF district um, if you have an active credit enhancement agreement. You know, there's, there's some limitations right, on right. what you can do, obviously, because it would affect that con contract that, that you've entered into with the credit enhancement agreement in the future. But if it doesn't affect those terms of the credit enhancement agreement, then future changes can be made through an amendment process, which is frequently used by municipalities to you know, adjust the types of things that you can use TIF revenues for, for municipal purposes. And you, know, you can adjust acreage, uh, you know, the acreage of the district if it doesn't affect the credit enhancement agreement and, and various other things. So. Does anybody else have any question? OK, thank you. Sure. So with that, any discussion, open discussion about this issue? No? Um, so I guess without a motion? Ready for a vote? All those in favor? Okay, all those opposed? Five, two. So that closes out 18081. Next item is 18082 which is acting on the request to adopt the Scarborough downtown own above this municipal budget and tax development and tax incremental financing, financing district and adopt the development program for such district as presented and pursue it to long form order. Um, is there any other, um, Tom, any other clarification on that or is that pretty straightforward? <laughs> I would say straightforward. Yeah, it was um, but <laughs> I'm not sure what further complication. Maybe it's best that we serve and stand ready to answer your questions. That seemed to serve you well last time. I, I'm not sure what I could offer uh, in anticipation of your questions. So with that, um, I, 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 we open this up as public comment for all three. Does anybody have any additional public comments that they already haven't made on this particular item? Nope. With that, motion hmm. approval. Second. Oh. Um, all those in favor? Yeah. Any discussion of this? That was unanimous, 7-0. Mm -hmm. 
Was that? I'm confused. I shouldn't have voted because I don't know what I just voted on. 18. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Second one. Second yeah. one. 18. Yeah. The tip's discussion. I, I apologize. Discussion. Yeah. Sorry, that's what I was waiting for. <laughs> Sorry, that's my <laughs> fault. I was so excited. I was like, wow, it's going to get through this even quicker. <laughs> oh, you, you're going to be wrong on your projections when we won't get out here. I, oh, I, I I'm just trying to help you out, dude. <laughs> He's going to win. Discussion. Sure. I'll be the first on this. So, um, I actually um, will make comments and I'll actually keep them strictly to the TIF issue. Um, so something to keep in mind is that um, the TIF can be approved, but the credit enhancement um, doesn't necessarily have to be approved as part of the TIF. And the reason is that um, the benefit, there's really um, two benefits. In my view, there's two economic benefits. The first is that um, the designation of the district will allow us to shelter the value that is increased as a result of any development. Um, and sheltering it, what I mean by that is that in the state formulas for funding for education, mean revenue sharing, whatever the other things might be, um, it helps us because it decreases the total value of the town, which then increases, maybe, depending on funding, the opportunity uh, for us to receive increased state educational funding. And at a point in which we are a minimal receiver and with some high hopes of who has been elected, um, of those who have been elected to the legislature will hopefully um, get out of minimal receivership and start receiving more benefit. So in the long term, um, I believe that this is um, a very positive move um, second is that, um, you know, from a long-term infrastructure, um, I, I don't think the TIF is actually a perfect um, solution uh, it, with its current wording, but I didn't propose any amendments because I believe that this needs to move forward um, in its current construct and possibly amend later. Particularly, um, it calls for a 3% reserve uh, to be established um, from the revenues that are generated um, from the increased valuation in which that would then be used for long-term infrastructure needs related to the economic development. The purpose of the TIF is not to minimize the amount of the reserve. You should actually try to get as close to 100%, I would think, as possible. Some I'd say that's a little too high, and a lot of communities do. And, and the reason is that those funds are then reserved so that you do not have to take out long-term financing debt um, mm -hmm. for infrastructure development. Um, and for a town that has been, or at least a council, um, and many citizens who have been focused so heavily on debt management in this town and debt per capita, debt per valuation, whatever debt model that you want to look at, 3% um, is inadequate. It's actually kind of comical, I think. It needs to be 25%, maybe as high as 50, but it needs to be much higher than what that is um, right now. But again, I didn't propose it um, because I think that this needs to move forward. The second piece is that, um, and I think it's, his name is, is it Mr. Tibbetts, um, who's a former manager, um, brought up something that I had um, never thought of that was intriguing because when I first um, was reelected to the council four years ago, one of the things that I talked with Ms. Martin about um, and Sedco was that I wanted to see Scarborough move in the same direction that Saco Bidifit has over the years in creating an innovative um, uh, lending program for micro lenders, incubators, um, and you know, entrepreneurs by giving them what they call micro loans, which is generally loans less than 50,000. Because those startups need that money and that guarantee in order to get other financing structures or other financing from other banks. Um, and I think that if we truly want to be visionaries, we need to think about what we can offer to those people that can come here and bring those new technologies and that new business and their families um, and uh, what can support them in the long run. So I am very much in support of this, um, regardless of whether there's a credit enhancement agreement. Um, again, I think it's... Um, you know, the percent reserved needs to be looked at, but I think it needs to move forward for the purposes of tonight, and then we can talk about increasing that later, as well as maybe, you know, creating a, a loan program to support new businesses. Councilor Tonello? Uh, I agree with Councilor Baybine, uh, but we have done this with a purpose. We have 97% of the funds that are available to be reserved, we are putting in the general fund. We can change that. What we all realize is this is a really momentous moment. Uh, we all hope for the best, fear the worst, but uh, we need to see what happens. And if it is as successful as many of us think it will be, we probably will start to be able to see monies that are available beyond the costs uh, that we incur, beyond the uh, credit enhancement agreement obligations that we incur that are available
to do things that will be economically valuable for us. We can shelter that money. Uh, uh, right now, the big bang for the buck on sheltering is in the school funding formula. We don't, we're a minimum receiver, so it, it really doesn't have much influence on us there. County level, it does. There's 5.5% uh, 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 value in, in that. Uh, so in the future, I fully expect, while we may not be the seven people who are making that decision, I expect there will be town councilors who will be looking very closely at the question of how much money is available to uh, shelter uh, and use rather than bonding. And that, uh, uh, to the extent we can keep our bonds down, pay cash, uh, that's a very appropriate uh, uh, strategy. Uh, building on the comments that uh, were just made about uh, the TIF and the size of the TIF and the benefits of the TIF, uh, <clears throat> you know, definitely there's that expression about, uh, you know, hope for the best, um, plan for the worst was the, was the part that I, that I had heard. And um, so I, I was surprised when the TIF was expanded dramatically from the original size of just the, the Downs district to incorporate uh, basically $98 million worth of real estate, you know, Oak Hill, Route 1, and the Downs. So that's, I, I'm not typically a, a worrying type of person, but um, without much experience of this size, you know, common sense would lend me to think that um, perhaps the way to do this would be, rather than a big bang, to try to you know, do it in smaller parts. Um, so, you know, that's why my sentiment about uh, the frame of the TIF, the size of the TIF, is uh, similarly uh, in question. Yes, sir, Katarina. Um, again, um, just uh, uh, for the Councillor Hamill and others who may not be aware, again, this has been through long range planning. Um, and has been thoroughly discussed uh, and vetted and those, you know, questions <coughs> talked about. Um, and that is why we are where we are at today. I, I think to add to that, I think if we're going to create such a large TIF district, I think immediately we need to start considering a some sort of framework on which we're going to operate with CEA. So if Scarborough is now open for business and we're sending if we're sending this signal to the business community to come into Scarborough, I think if we have such a large TIF district, we're going to also have a lot of requests for CEA. So I think it's going to be our responsibility to pretty quickly move on. How does that look? How are we going to, obviously each one of these is, is very different from the next one, as mm -hmm. we've learned here with the downs. Um, but I think it's going to be important that we have some sort of framework so we can avoid um, some of the friction that we've had in this whole process with the downs. Um, just as a reference point, I know that um, as a member of, the, of a, at least in the past finance committees for the last four years with Peter and, and Chris Chiazzo and, and Mr. Donovan, um, that is probably the next item that the finance committee has been discussing as part of its overall fiscal management uh, policy uh, that we've also had a conversation with our own bond, uh, bond council, or not bond council, the, uh, what's his name, the advisor, the bond advisor, <coughs> um, that that would strengthen our overall rating by having that type of policy. So it is something that past councils have talked about. Thank you. So you're right. Any other comments, questions? Council Donovan? Given, given the size of the uh, downtown TIF, uh, I think uh, uh, policies around uh, it beyond the Scarborough Downs uh, credit enhancement agreement is a good idea. I would encourage the Finance Committee to uh, take on that issue. Uh, we all, the seven of us, plus the town manager and Karen Martin, we all learned a lot. Uh, this has been a about an eight-month process, and it took us a long time to be able to really understand the ways in which we wanted to be able to negotiate. And we all started out here last, I guess, winter or spring with education programs workshops on TIFs and CEAs. And once we got our legs underneath us, 
I think we were we had a, a framework and principles that we all bought into, uh, and the negotiating team was able to take off. But as Councillor Johnson said, they're all different, uh, and so we should be thinking about rather than waiting and have it sort of be presented to us, we ought to be ready for it. So I would endorse that idea. Councillor Foley? Um, yeah, so I just kind of want to, you know, rewind the clock a little bit and, and because the concerns of that uh, Councillor Hamill brought up were definitely points of uh, concern for many of us. Originally, not sure whether we should encompass it this big, but I, I think given uh, the feedback and, and the information that we learned in the workshops and kind of, you know, wading through all of this information together, uh, most of us came to realize that we needed to uh, en encompass the municipal campus and that piece to make it work. Um, so it wasn't that it wasn't considered uh, or thought of. If, if, I, if I had a preference, I would have preferred to do them separately. Um, but that wasn't ideal in terms of moving things forward. So uh, it was discussed as well as um, CEA policies in general and creating a policy around that. Um, well, that's for future discussion as well. Any additional comments? Uh, I guess it's time for votes. All those in favor? All those opposed? So it's 5 2. Um, with that, the next order is 18083, an act on the request to approve the credit enhancement agreement with the Downs DBA Crossroads Holding LLC as presented and pursuant to long form order. Um, so with that, I'm not sure we need any additional introduction or do you think? Uh, um, just quickly, this is a, a legal financial document uh, the town is considering a, in, entering into with a developer uh, in town. Uh, it is obviously a, as such a, a binding contract that must be changed by mutual consent of both parties. I think you uh, made that point earlier and that's certainly one of the reasons why we've painstakingly gone through this and tried our best to uh, negotiate the, the best deal we can. Uh, I think it's fair to say that things will change and I can probably accurately predict that uh, both parties will come back together at some point. Uh, we can't possibly have uh, predicted the future. And so uh, there's no guarantees, but uh, our experience with other TIFs uh, suggests very strongly that parties will want to come back to the table um, as things change in the future. So with that, um, we've, we've already had public comment. Is there any additional public comment on this particular order? With that, I'll close public comment. Um, Move motion. approval of order number 18-083. Second. All those in favor? Oh, oh discussion, second. sorry. I'll get there. You'll, you'll, them. you'll get there. You'll, you'll get it. it. I'll get it, sorry. My apologies. Discussion. So exciting. <laughs> Council Donovan? Uh, I, I think just for the people, both in the audience and who are watching at home, it would be valuable to appreciate the process that we went through. It's kind of the boring stuff, but uh, I think it's important for people to realize, at least I had four or five things that were essential for me to be able to support the credit enhancement agreement. One was that the process had to be deliberative. Uh, uh, I think it's probably about eight months since we started, certainly the town manager and I uh, talking about it nearly every day and then bringing with workshops and other discussions to town councilors on a very regular basis, month in and month out. We had easily a dozen public forums uh, uh, to explain it to the public. We must have heard from hundreds of members of the public uh, uh, through emails, letters, showing up at these uh, uh, informational meetings. Uh, uh, I applaud the uh, town staff for posting virtually everything that could be posted uh, so that the public would have all the information available. Uh, SEDCO issued a lengthy report uh, evaluating uh, this process. Uh, the public hearing on November 7th was well attended and we had close to 20 people speak, many leaders in the community, uh, representatives from the Scarborough and Portland Regional 
chambers of commerce. Uh, and just before that, uh, I had asked the counselors, we're getting nearer, and we were really identifying a date of November 28th uh, as the date, because we had decided that we would wait till after the election. We did not want to be able to have uh, any sense of rushing to judgment on this thing. Uh, we uh, were able to receive input. I asked the counselors, all in, all done. Let me know wh what else you want to, would like to be able to see. Councillor Baybay, Councillor Foley, uh, Councillor Rowan, all got back to me uh, about a month ago with memos and comments that said, I think we could improve it in this way, in this way, in this way. Mm -hmm. And we went back, even though in good faith the negotiating committee had said, okay, we're satisfied. We traded, horse traded issues back and forth. We went back and we sought uh, uh, approval of the issues that had been raised by those three counselors. And about 99% of it was agreed to by the, uh, by the Scarborough Downs people. Uh, we then had an election and we held a first meeting, November 14th, for the purpose of being able to let the new members have their say uh, and, and realizing that it, we had made our deal and we had renegotiated the deal and it advanced it forward. But we had new people at the table and we wanted to hear what they had to say. Uh, and uh, out of that process came other issues and the negotiating team went back to Scarborough Downs again. Uh, and I must say, they were tough negotiations. They were difficult. Uh, uh, I have great respect for the Risbera and Misho uh, families as a result of the interaction that I've uh, had with them over these last eight months uh, because they uh, were polite and courteous and made their points and were practical in trying to make compromises so as to move this along. Uh, and, uh, and so as I went home on the 14th of November, I was thinking, we had had a session, and I was thinking, the new counselors are right. This is the last shot. We have an obligation. We may not be comfortable as a negotiating team bringing it back forward, but we had an obligation to the community. And I felt that was a, that, that was a more important obligation than uh, the uh, negotiations and the goodwill that I wished to re remain while we were while we were working out terms. So the agreement was better as a result of both of those rounds, uh, and as a result, uh, uh, the agreement, uh, the process, has been deliberative and thoughtful uh, and open to all. And I think that is an important element too. Uh, to achieve if you're going to enter into an agreement that has this m enormity, this significance to the community. Council Johnson. So um, being the new guy, if you can indulge me just for one second, just to give the public an idea of what I've done personally, since I essentially just appeared out of nowhere, so it might be easy to think, well, you know, what's he basing his decision on? Uh, I've spent no less than eight hours with both of the developers. Uh, I've had three in-person meetings with Rocky and Peter. One, Peter was not there. The other two, Rocky and Peter, were both there. I spoke on the phone with Rocky last night for another 45 minutes. Um, so I've had about eight hours, eight and a half hours of personal contact with each developer. Um, after the public <coughs> hearing on November 3rd, I believe, or the, the November 3rd, I believe, right? Um, I reached out seven, to seven. Seven. I reached out to two residents that spoke in favor of the project. Um, and we had a discussion by proxy. I know Mr. Hamill and uh, Mr. Hayes also met with Mr. Tibbetts, I believe, uh, who also spoke in favor of the project, and we commiserated afterwards. Um, the last time I sat and had lunch with somebody, so to speak, that was opposed to the project was the Sunday before I got sworn in. Um, and then pretty much everybody I see around town, I just my end my conversation by, well, what do you think about the downs? Um, and I'm not going to bring up any of those thoughts. Um, but the, so just that was the background. That's what I have done for homework because I think it's important for some context 
Um, I'm not just coming in necessarily as a member of the public who was frankly trying to bring this to referendum about four months ago, I believe I screamed a, a town council meeting about this. Um, so my observations are a little unique, half of them in the public and half are as a member of the council. Uh, a couple of thoughts that I have, uh, number one, it's a 20 year build, it's a 30 year agreement, but from my understanding it's a 20 year build. Uh, so what that says to me is that for the first 10 years, there are no standard based, uh, there are no performance benchmarks to meet. Uh, so for in, in, from my perspective, for half of the build out, um, there is no checking in with the developers. Uh, there are check-ins uh, that are going to be an annoyance to the developer and they are going to be a lot of work for everybody involved, but um, to put it as blunt as possible, they don't necessarily have any teeth. Uh, the agreement still, both parties have to come back and agree to the table and, and that's pretty much what it's left for for the first 10 years. Uh, so coming in from the outside, my big thing was I, I strongly believe there was a five, I should, there should have been a five year check in. Um, I understand from the developer's standpoint that wasn't necessarily possible for them. Um, and I'm a little late to the game, so I didn't, there's, that's not necessarily something I, this is not my agreement, so to speak. There's no Paul Johnson in this agreement. Um, so if there was from the beginning, that would be one of the things that I would be uh, very concerned with. Uh, today, this afternoon, we got the official infrastructure validation. Um, it count, comes out somewhere between 60 and $80 million, I believe, is, is specifically for the industrial side of the project. Uh, I strongly feel like the 60 to 80 million is um, the top line, so to speak, does not scare me. I think the developers to deserve 80 million dollars if that's what they invest in infrastructure. But I think the agreement should have been uh, much more focused around infrastructure. And that's what, as a town, even people that support the project, I feel like one of the things that's reoccurring is that we are essentially helping pay for the infrastructure. So I feel like the, the agreement should have been more around that. And I understand that these are not, these are a little pie in the sky. I don't, I haven't been there for the eight months. Um, but from what I have observed through this process is as someone who was in the public and now who is supposed to represent the town, I have felt the feeling that the developer's financing has come paramount to everything else. And I'm not comfortable with that. So I will not be supporting the agreement. Councilor. Uh, I, uh, I won't go through the points that uh, Councillor Johnson just went through, uh, other than to say that uh, you know, I support most of what he said. Um, I, I want to also just kind of uh, respond to uh, some comments that uh, Councillor Donovan had made. You know, uh, he and Tom and the rest of the council have been really quite generous and flexible in terms of trying to accommodate. Uh, our participation in the process, albeit at a very late hour, you know, at the 11th hour. And I appreciate that. And I think that uh, together we, we've made some improvements, you know, not as many as I would like, but I'm, I'm encouraged by that, irrespective of what the vote may be on this last uh, motion this evening. Um, but, uh, but I am troubled with uh, a number of aspects, um, you know, of the CEA. I've been very vocal about these uh, as a candidate, and even since then. Um, and uh, I, it's it's the enormity of the project, the size and scale. We tend to talk about this like every other TIF, and I know we've had folks here from Kenny Buck and Westbrook. This is much larger than anything that's been down in Idaho this town. <coughs> You know, currently underway or in the history of those towns. But it's, and I think by, by virtue of that, that means that there are very likely to be uh, things we have not anticipated. And I think it's going to take some time for each of us and some time for all of us as a community to understand fully the enormity of this decision and the commitments that. Uh, have been made and may be made tonight and their implications. $80 million, 30 years, you know. So, you know, I just, the other thought I'd like to close with is, uh, and my feeling about this is that uh, uh, I, I am concerned about uh, potentially a new risk emerging from the process that has been followed. And I know that the, this process has been amended several times, you know, in, in large part in response to public outcry. It fell short of uh, um, putting this before the entire town for a referendum. 
Um, and maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. We'll never know, maybe. Um, but the risk that I see is that, you know, the risk of having, you know, a, a large developer or another private entity developing a relationship uh, with the council and then somehow along the way, uh, you know, us not fulfilling completely our, our right and responsibility as a town government and as a public to lead and to drive the future of the town rather than having that being driven and defined primarily by developer. Now, in saying that, I don't want to be critical about the initiative. I mean, they, these guys are visionaries. They put more time, you know, blood, sweat, and tears into this than anybody. So I don't want to be critical of the effort. However, I do want to make sure that we're fully aware of what the risk is in terms of that type of relationship and relying too much um, on a private entity to define for the entire town for a long period of time what the future might be. So, um, and this whole question about the comprehensive plan process, I, even though we've adopted part of this to become potentially part of the comprehensive plan, um, there's tremendous work that was done in the 2006 plan, there's tremendous work that needs to be done and the 10-year update that's required by the state that's not completed yet, and oh, by the way, we haven't even approved that yet before we're approving this TIF and CEA. So those are the things that I, I want to make sure that we're keeping top of mind. And I know that we'll be living, breathing uh, this agreement uh, if it goes through. And um, you know, I look forward to that work together with the council and the rest of the public. Council Kettering. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, for those of you who don't know me, I'm not a fan of TIFs or CEAs. I see them as corporate welfare. That being said, um, having participated over the last year almost in all of the different aspects of uh, investigating um, how it is that we can be partners uh, as a town uh, with, with this developer in this huge undertaking, and I don't disagree with uh, my fellow counselor here that this is a huge undertaking, um, I have come to believe that yes indeed that the CEA is something that I can support and will support tonight um, for a number of reasons. Um, one of the speakers tonight uh, put it very well succinctly saying um, he, that he thinks that we should be partners rather than overseers. Uh, if this, this, the Downs is going to be developed whether we're involved or not and quite frankly I would just as soon as a taxpayer myself and as a member of this town council and tasked with being a fiduciary for the citizens of this town, I want to say in what goes on over there. And that is what we are getting with the CEA. It's going to be developed one way or the other. I was also looking for a return on that investment because I, I feel like it's as if I were an investor in this. You know, if I was a billionaire and I'm the one who had to come up with a 51 million dollars. Um, what's my return on the investment? The investment return is 100 and almost 150 million dollars more than if we just let the developer do it themselves. Because they're going to. Why wouldn't they? They own the land. They're, we have something called private property rights in this world. We have something called ordinances. I know I'm the chair of ordinance, and we have some. Over, that's that's where the overseer piece comes in. Um, but I would rather be a partner in this, and I see the CEA as um, providing that partnership opportunity. I feel it has been thoroughly vetted, as Mr. Donovan pointed out. We did a number of workshops. Scarborough Downs themselves did their own workshops. Um, I've had communications back and forth with people by phone. I can't go shopping in Hannaford without someone, you know, asking me about, you know, this or a number of other things, and that's fine. Um, emails, uh, whatnot. Um, I have had a number of people, they were like me, they were like, why are we giving this developer all this money? But once they became educated on how this system works, and this is the only development tool provided to municipalities. They were like, sure, that makes sense now. It makes a lot of sense. 
Um, and finally, well, two, two finals. One is I'd like us to be seen as business friendly, believe it or not. You know, I'm in the real estate world myself. Scarborough's not seen as a particularly business friendly, business development friendly town, or hasn't been. We're working on that. We're doing a great job with SEDCO and whatever, but this will really help with that. I'm also huge on fiscal sustainability. Folks, I'm not a spring chicken. I'm 63 myself. Um, I'm senior citizen. I'm getting there. Uh, I don't want to be paying taxes up the wazoo. I plan to stay in Scarborough for the rest of my life. We need to have a really good and varied business base in order to stabilize our taxes. So um, I will be supporting this, and I think, frankly, it's time to fish or cut bait. So there you go. Councilor Fuller. Um, I might as well weigh in. So I've been back and forth on this issue um, since it was first introduced to us many, many months ago. Uh, and, and I would agree with uh, Councillor Donovan. There's been a pretty robust process in place. Uh, hindsight, of course, is always 2020. Um, so could we have done some things better? Absolutely. Um, and one suggestion I would have for future councils or uh, future town managers or whomever is, is, is undertaking a project like this um, is to have all of the councillors involved earlier. So uh, while I know Councillor Donovan and, and the town manager um, were very deep in it early on, some of the rest of us weren't brought in until a little later. So it took us a little bit longer. And I was fine pushing back um, and saying, I, I need the time till I'm comfortable with this. Um, and I was pleasantly um, granted that time. So uh, I've, I too have spent hours and hours on the phone um, with folks on both sides. Do it, don't do it, Katie, are you crazy? Um, I've had uh, folks who, you know, are even uh, opposed to the project completely say, well, if it's a home run, if they do what they say they're going to do, then it makes sense, right? So, but we don't know that. And um, as I've thought about my decision tonight, one of the things I know without a doubt in this world is that there, um, there's never a reward, reward without any risk. Mm -hmm. So of course there's risk here. Um, none of us, if, if we could all predict what the next 20 to 30 years are going to be, um, we'd all be rich. Wouldn't that be great? Uh, I would love that. Um, however, that's not the way it is. And as I looked through the pros and cons, you know, this isn't a no-brainer. It's not a grand slam, you know. Um, but I think uh, for many of the reasons articulated tonight, um, it does make more sense to be a partner in this work. Uh, and, you know, the other thing, and I'll say this is probably the number one thing that has um, pushed me over to that side of the fence, if you will, is, is who the developers are. Mm. So knowing that this property has been under contract 17 times over the last decade or longer. Um, in fact, I had a buyer myself. I'm a real estate agent. I had a buyer myself, right? after uh, <laughs> they went under contract. Um, they, you know, it means a lot to me that it's a local partner. Um, I would be far more skeptical of any out-of-state developer coming in to try to change our town in this way. Um, I just reminded myself, I do want to address uh, Mr. Summers' questions earlier. He asked about if folks would be willing to sign a non-compete. I'd absolutely sign a non-compete. They have their own real estate agent. I have plenty of work myself, so I have no intention to go work for um, their spires as much as I might like to. Um, so <laughs> you can put that in front of me. And then the other question was around Scarborough being a prime location. There's no doubt. We live here because Scarborough is a great town and a great location. Um, but what I do know, and, and this comes from my background, you know, I grew up, in, I'm a city girl, I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, very different <laughs> from Scarborough, Maine. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, just when you look at the state of Maine, right, we are different from the rest of the country. Business, develop, and, and bringing the right kind of economic development engines here takes longer. It's, it's a difficult task. So. Um, I do believe that there's more pros than cons. I believe um, I want them to hit the home run. In fact, I'd love a grand slam. 
So I'm going to be holding their feet to the fire and watching uh, every step of the way to make sure that that happens. But even if they hit a double, guess what? I think it's going to still be a win-win for the town. Um, the last point I want to make, because I hear a lot of people talk about this, is um, how can you give the developers so much money? Um, developers are businessmen. They're here to make money, and I don't begrudge them that. Um, if this agreement does what it has the potential to do, uh, it means the town's also going to make money. Um, and that's why I'm going to support this this evening. So, thanks. Any other comments, Council Beaver? Suppose I'll go. <laughs> um, so the great part um, about sitting on the council and really in any board is that each of us has um, some contribution to the discussion, even when you might be on an opposing side, because there's value in the risks that they identify and the concerns that they have. So I think that each of us have um, truly shared that over the eight month period. Um, and I do appreciate, um, appreciate that. Um, I'm going to be extremely clear. I have been supportive of this deal since day one when it came forward. Maybe not in its original format, but I'm very pleased with um, what has been negotiated as part of the credit enhancement agreement um, specifically. Um, I looked at this agreement and the overall and the project and, and said, and having lived through um, many of those committees that Mr. Merrill sat on, I think they were called growth management, um, something, data, um, open space. Mr. O'Reilly was on the council then. There was like 15 different committees that talked about growth management. And by the way, growth management in this town has been a divisive issue since 1658, which by the way, if you didn't notice, is an anniversary year this year, um, in which the Sokoko's Indians um, killed all of the settlers in Scarborough because they were moving in. So um, we've always been at odds. I'm totally serious about that. <laughs> totally serious. Look up the history of Scarborough. Sure. 1678, they killed over 100 settlers and 1,000 head of cattle because they moved into town. Um, so we've always been at odds about growth management. Uh, but it's how we respond to the needs of our time. We respond to the needs of our time. And I've been on the council long enough that I do recall the impacts of the comprehensive plans and the conversations around Scarborough Downs in particular. Um, 96, the comprehensive plan was used. And, early 2000 to, you know, draft growth management ordinances and the fee structures and things to deal with growth. Uh, 2006 was an extension of that. And then even the draft of this year talks about um, what we envision for Scarborough Downs and for um, this new district. And in that, it also talks about the economic tool that we're using as a credit enhancement agreement as an opportunity. It, doesn't, it might not necessarily say it specifically, but it talks about these economic opportunities for the partnership. Um, if we look at the overall plan, um, this provides us with one major, major opportunity um, that is not a risk. It, uh, we are going to be economic partners with a developer that gives us a critical role in the direction of what is going to happen in this town over the next 30 years with that particular property, um, as well as now even um, in the new downtown district. Um, and I think that that is a positive move because this could be um, not even before us, in which they could have anywhere from 4,000 to however many it might be, residential properties on that space, and that's all we have. So when you think about the risk of not doing nothing with 4,000 single-family homes and residential properties, think about what the impact of the school system. That alone scares, should scare you um, and should, if anything, almost convince you that we need to have a partnership, and this is the tool in which we could do it. I like the long-range vision, long vision of this. I like the land use optimization and the mixture of industrial um, and um, small business growth, um, as well as the residential piece. Um, you know, we've looked at other we've looked at other plans in the past, and I think that Mr. Rispero was right. Um, we were always skeptical on the council when those plans came forward because the Racina was always the core piece of really what was driving the economic development or the proposals for business development in that area. And the council saw through that, saw the transparency of it, and said no. It wasn't the right fit, um, and I think the citizens even um, said no when, um, it, when at least the Racino piece came forward and the town has voted three times um, not to allow that. Um, there's, there's been a lot that has been said about um, incentivizing growth. Um, I don't follow that, that theory. This is not incentivizing growth. Growth is simply a reaction to demand. The developers are not going to build residential homes if there is no demand for them. They're not going to build the industrial buildings and whether it's light manufacturing, <laughs> large manufacturing, distribution, whatever it might be, office space, unless there is a demand and there is occupancy. I can tell you as part of any financing plan, being a banker, 
The bank's not going to allow them just simply to build a city or to build the downtown in which there's no one else in there. They're going to have to have occupancy and they're going to have to have those places uh, filled before they can move on to the next stage or at least up to a particular point. So it's not going to be just simply building, getting their money and then running um, if the value comes in. Um, and, and I agree that um, you know along this way it's been a very, um, it's been challenging. I've learned a lot. I really want to say thanks to uh, former chairman uh, Bill uh, Donovan for le taking the charge for us. Um, uh, there's a benefit of being a chairman and then also being retired um, with such a big issue <laughs> because when you uh, have to work, it's very hard to stay engaged at the level that you did. And I want to say thank you. Thank you to the staff, Tom, Karen, um, everyone, um, Ms. Mueller, um, our council, because um, you have made the understanding process very easy um, and very easy for me to support this. Um, I think it's one of the um, best things that could happen. And by the way, um, to this day, people still yell because back in, I think it was 1999 when I first got involved, um, we had an opportunity. It wasn't a TIF, but it was some type of an agreement in which People's Heritage Bank, um, uh, People's Heritage Bank wanted to put their operations center at the top of the um, Highgate Parkway, and the town said no. Um, and to this day, 20, almost 20 years later, um, you know, we lost that opportunity. Whether it was right or wrong is always in hindsight. I don't want to see us lose this opportunity, and I think that this is a great opportunity. And uh, personally, I, I promise you, I will not be here in 30 years uh, on the town council, but I will come with my, I will come with my walker um, and uh, <laughs> stroll the downtown with any one of you if you're still uh, still in town with me. So thank you, Council Donovan. Um, besides uh, a goal, my own personal goals of being deliberative because I was chair last year and I wanted this thing to be fair, a fair hearing for everyone. But besides that, I had three other personal goals. And one was, this had to be a big financial winner for the town. Uh, uh, we had the benefit of a return on investment uh, software program that was created to be able to do this kind of analysis. We bought it last uh, winter and it took uh, Karen Martin, the director of SEDCO, some time to work with it. And she, the amount of time that she spent to get comfortable with it uh, was remarkable. Her, I, I can't tell you how much value this community has received from Karen Martin and the SEDCO board. Uh, it's been tremendous in, in terms of their dedication. Uh, and the return on investment analysis and some of the comments made by counselors who I knew really didn't have a supportive viewpoint said, let's get it double checked. And it was such a great idea. And we came up with two experts who uh, looked at it very carefully and endorsed the analysis, which said, uh, if you do this uh, credit enhancement agreement, you will be substantially by several hundred million dollars ahead of the game than if you don't do it. So when that was the result of it and it was confirmed, I said, okay, that one's fine. Uh, the next one that I had was that it, this project had to manage uh, uh, residential growth in Scarborough uh, because that was as much as the loss of money or the poor financial outcome that this would occur was the unfettered growth. People claiming, well, we'll It'll just be all residential. Uh, you don't have anything that will keep it from being res residential for 10 years. And I've, I've tried to explain to people that we have really a trio of, uh, of uh, regulatory opportunities here to control growth. One, obviously, is the credit enhancement agreement. Uh, and uh, it sets up standards that says, we're not going to allow more than a certain number of single-family houses, and that's, a, that's the big loser from a financial point of view. Uh, we're also going to penalize uh, Scarborough Downs if they do not uh, advance a certain amount of non-residential, and that's a real plus for us. So we have, we've got some real strength in the uh, credit enhancement agreement. People forget that the Crossroads uh, zoning district mandates a mixed use. The people who've been saying, what well, could be all residential? That is dead wrong. That is illegal. 
it cannot be all, uh, all residential. It has to be commercial, industrial. You just read the Crossroads Zoning District Ordinance, and you'll say, oh my god, this thing has real teeth. It really has to, and it's, and it's very tightly controlled by the planning board. And you have to submit master plans, and, and for each segment, another master plan. And what we have here already is the proof of the commitment of Scarborough Downs. They're already uh, 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 on the verge of getting an enormous 130-acre industrial district approved uh, because they've got customers ready to go. And they're already in the ground putting in uh, industrial level uh, uh, infrastructure uh, uh, at the entranceway. So we've, uh, and, and we put all this in, in the agreement. We said this is the intention, that it is a mixed use zone. So it's in the credit enhancement agreement. Uh, uh, so the crossroads zone uh, is a tremendous uh, uh, control uh, over getting what we want. And lastly, we have had for years a growth management ordinance. And it's the third uh, leg of the stool. Uh, we, we only let a certain number of building permits out a year. Uh, and this, this agreement uh, doesn't exempt them from it. So we have all sorts of controls in place to control growth. So I felt like, OK, two out of three, uh, and, the, and the third and last one was, will it promote economic development? Because they are already stuck. Uh, uh, because the people who came before us said, 10% of all housing has to be affordable housing. Housing that can be uh, afforded by teachers and firemen and cops, uh, people who we want in the community. Uh, and so we've got uh, uh, an economic engine here where we have affordable housing, we have uh, a SEDCO analysis that was the companion analysis to the return on investment analysis that says this project uh, over the next two decades is going to create about 3,000 jobs uh, and they're going to be good paying jobs because we've sat with the uh, Scarborough, develop, uh, Scarborough Downs people, and we know the kind of uh, development projects, industrial, commercial uh, uh, development projects that are interested in coming here. Uh, in the greater Portland area, there is a 1% uh, vacancy rate for industrial properties. There is a tremendous demand. The newspaper had a very sad story in it this week. Uh, about a 76,000 square foot facility that went to Gorham. Uh, uh, I would have liked to have had it here. It could have been here, but the process was important, and we stuck to the process. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. I expect there'll be more, uh, but, uh, but uh, that economic development piece was the, the third uh, piece that I thought was critical. And uh, so I'm honored to support this. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Councilor Johnson? I don't want to, it seems like we all have our stances, but, and I don't want to get into much of a debate here, but just, just so I can say this out loud, the third party analysis pretty clearly states that there's actually fewer children in the Downs uh, without the CEA. Uh, now, I'm not going to debate that I absolutely agree that the upside with the CEA is much bigger. Um, but I just I want it to be pretty clear out there that there's certain boogeymans that, that we've been talking about that don't necessarily exist, and I think one of them is the school uh, load without the CEA. Uh, you know, and the the other thing that that has been brought up quite a bit is um, the enormity of this project. It, it's as Don mentioned, I believe, at the workshop. It's the third biggest, and it's probably it's the only of its kind in the history of the state as far as the mixed development and the size of it. So it's, it's only behind essentially Bath Ironworks and the Rumford Mill. And one of the things that I've heard a lot is that we've had a lot of people on the job that have been learning as they go. And that is not to discredit people's time and energy they've spent on this, and I know that how that might come off. 
Um, but I think the third party analysis also made it pretty clear that this is the first time that this particular software had been used in, for, in, in the United States for a 30 year period on a year by year basis. Uh, so as, as, I, as I vote, I want to make it very clear, this is not a philosophical debate for me. I am, I am hugely in favor of a CEA and I hope these guys crush it. Uh, but I do think that there's, there's some realities that I feel like aren't necessarily always discussed. And I wanted to offer that up before we vote. So, and I think I've been I've been quiet this evening, and I kind of saved all my comments. Sort of through where I am, I've, I've listened to all the conversations, and for me, what keeps me up at night is I really think we have a fiduciary and due diligence responsibility. And I think there's a real difference when I make a personal investment. I know what the risks are. I accept those risks. If something goes awry, it's on me. What we're talking about here, though, is we're making decisions for the next 30 years for every resident in Scarborough that pays taxes. So I, I take that as, as a much higher bar to fulfill. <clears throat> and when you think about it, what we heard tonight is, you know, we should hope for the best but plan for the worst. And what's really concerned me about this whole process is we haven't planned for the worst. There hasn't been a lot of conversation around what if. What is the downside if things don't play out the way we're talking about? And to put this in perspective, our total debt in this town is $100 million today. That's $5,000 per capita. So if you have three people at home, there's $15,000 that you own in deferred taxes. When you start talking about $81 million, that is a big number. And so for me, um, what keeps me up at night when I look at this, what concerns me the most, I think if the numbers play out and even I read the financial reports we got back much differently. And Steve Brin's report said, our total return on investment that you've heard about tonight, 68% of the money that we're counting on getting to make this thing be in, in, the, in the black, making money, comes in years 20 through 30. And just let me put that in perspective. 30 years ago, in 1990, it was when the internet went worldwide. And 1994 is when Amazon started. And who would have thought that Amazon now is, if, if you took their total sales of $178 billion, they'd have the 55th largest economy in the world. And who would have predicted that a while ago? And I don't know if you saw the headlines this week, GM is laying off 14,000 people closing five plants because they're going out of commercial, the sedan business into SUVs and trucks and going to electric vehicles and autonomous driving. Ford is going to stop producing sedans. I mean, these are things that we sitting here today just can't predict 30 years out. So I'm concerned about the risk. That, that, that's a big thing for me. And I made reference to, um, you know, we, we've heard a lot, there's no financial risk here. It's all upside. The problem becomes in the first 10 years, it is possible that taxpayers will be paying more in taxes than they otherwise would have had to if we didn't do this. That, and, and we're going to get it back on the back end. But if things go awry, that can be a much different scenario for us. And when I talked about the financial consultant reports, both of them said, you know, they really aren't financial analysts in that sense. They looked at the same, but they did point out some things that are missing from our analysis. Number one, there are no capital costs reflected in the 30-year projection. No additional incremental capital costs were not reflected. They questioned that. Number two, our assumption was that our impact fees that we're charging covers all of the incremental capital costs, and we know that that's not true. Our impact fees today, the school impact fee, does not cover the real cost of that education. So they expressed that concern. They expressed the concern that a 30-year time frame is unusual, um, but this is a longer time frame than they've seen. And two, they said after 10 years, there is real risk because of the given, given uncertainties about the market and where things are. All of those things lead me to believe that, I be, it, it, part of my votes earlier tonight, I believe these are the right tools. I believe we should be doing these things. I don't believe this deal in front of us is the right deal, and that will be why I won't be supporting the CEA this evening. Thank you, Dan. So with that, any other comments, additional comments? So I guess we're ready for a vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? So it carries at 4-3. Um, the next item on the agenda is non-action items. I don't believe there's any action items tonight. 
Item nine is standing and special committee reports and liaison reports. And we can start. Sean, you want to start at your end? I have nothing. Thank you. I don't have any committees yet. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we take a pause and it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Where's everybody going? <laughs> Stay to the stay to the bitter end. Thank you. <laughs> He's used to it. We're not <laughs> done, Mr. Hall. Riding out in the parking lot, though. Mm -hmm. okay. Where do I stay late? Where do I? Is there a special chamber I can go to? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So okay. with that, continuing um, liaison and committee reports. So the, the conservation committee, uh, Con conservation commission met um, last week, and um, they had their first draft of uh, a plastic bag ordinance that they would like to <coughs> move forward to the ordinance committee once committees are established. I encourage them to wait until new committees were established before trying to do so. Um, but as I've been mentioning, they've been talking about this for at least six months now. Um, some of the data that they're going to bring forward, I think people are going to find really interesting. I certainly did. Um, so you can look forward to that coming to uh, an ordinance agenda in January. And other than that, that is all I have. Kelsey, Katarina? Um, I don't have anything. I've been busy uh, babysitting <laughs> for my husband and his niece. Oh, yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> I had no committees. <laughs> Council Hamill, I think I know the answer, but. <laughs> <laughs> waiting patiently. Wait, waiting patiently. Mm -hmm. Um, and as far as the committees I'm on, Finance Committee has been, I reported on that last time. I missed, I was on vacation last week. I know Harbor and Shellfish Commissions met, but I'm not clear of what the outcome of that was, and I need to check. So. They set the numbers for their shellfish licenses for next year, which will be coming before the council at the in second meeting in December. Thank you. So with that, um, town manager's yes. report. A few quick items. Uh, I just want to report on a, a really terrific event. Uh, the third annual Community Thanksgiving was held this past weekend. Uh, perhaps some of you attended. I wasn't able to, but uh, I did get a report. They served over 300 meals for those on site and sent another 50 meals home to folks that weren't able to get there. Uh, that's a real a collaborative effort done uh, in coordination with the nutrition staff of the school department, Project Grace, and uh, just a boatload of uh, really dedicated citizens. So. Uh, it, third annual, it sounds like it's uh, here to stay, we hope. So uh, a terrific uh, event and an effort by all. Uh, I did uh, want to mention that we have received confirmation from FEMA uh, regarding our, our appeal. We have formally uh, filed an appeal to the uh, revised flood maps. Uh, it's unknown as to how long uh, they'll take to respond, but uh, we will get uh, beyond the acknowledgement. We'll uh, hopefully get an audience with them to uh, sit down with our consultant and uh, see if we can um, have some modifications to those revised flood maps. Um, 
the town is involved in a Route 1 corridor study. This is in coordination with our friends in SACO. It's a study funded through uh, the PAX uh, Transportation Group. Uh, I mention that uh, because we will have a public meeting here on December 13th in these chambers, and that's an opportunity to engage the public in these conversations. Uh, we're really interested in, in some of the uh, products out of those, and um, I think we can all appreciate that corridor is being strained more and more every day, and so we need to be thinking very thoughtfully about the future. Uh, also, the Santa in the Park, this is an annual event that Community Services um, holds. Uh, will be this weekend, December 1st, 5 p.m. to 6.30. Uh, I believe there's tree lighting as part of that, and I think fireworks at the end. So it's a nice community event, uh, particularly for families. Uh, and lastly, I want to mention that Spectrum uh, has, as of today, gone all, all di digital. For those of us the, that are subscribers, you probably know that by now because your, your uh, TV's not working. Uh, you do need a converter box, which can be uh, obtained through Spectrum. I also want to mention, as part of the upgrade, uh, the channel lineup has changed, and so uh, the community television, which we uh, televised um, these meetings, is uh, is on 1301. Excuse me, 1302, and the public access is 1301. Uh, so I suspect they'll do further work to educate us all on what the new channel lineup. And I want to mention, as was mentioned from the podium earlier, we did undergo a process in the police department uh, to name a new lieutenant. And uh, formerly Sergeant Tim Barker is our new lieutenant with the department. Uh, Tim, I think, will, has certainly provided great service to the town um, during his tenure, and we expect tremendous things out of him uh, in the future. So with that, I'm available for questions if you have any. Anybody have any questions? Mm -hmm. uh, Council Don? Yeah, uh, I uh, uh, became a, uh, a new member of the Geek Squad. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and uh, was advised that Spectrum was going to be doing this transition on November 27th, and they did. The one TV that I had that was not a smart TV did not work. Uh, and what I'm told is, because every day that same lady shows up on the screen. Oh, right. uh, oh she's <laughs> that, I feel like I really know her pretty well. But, uh, <laughs> I was told by the D Squad guy who showed up at the door that for 40 bucks you can get a smart uh, adapter device for any TV that is no longer, uh, so that it gives a digital signal. You do not need to buy a Spectrum box, which will be $10 a month, so that after four months you will have matched and be about to exceed the cost. So for those out there who are wondering, what do I do? Uh, I know I went to Best Buy and it's 40 bucks and the Geek Squad guy installed it. <laughs> you can also stream through your Printed iPad. Up, that's 40 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, I guess we're moving to councillor comments, member comments, and I guess I'll start on this end of the table. Councillor Hamill, you have any closing comments this evening? Other, I know you're anxious to get back to Dublin and <laughs> some Guinness getting, and getting some. back to the old sod, but no, yeah. looking, forward to, <laughs> looking forward to the work ahead. You know, thank you. Yeah, I, uh, I'll echo that. I'm anxious to get this year started. Uh, I've just, uh, uh, I, in, in light of the uh, tax bill that was passed last year, uh, I really would like to uh, revisit the Senior Property Tax Relief Program. That has to start with an audit because anything we do cannot be a budget buster. It has to be reasonable, but I think low-income people deserve more of a break. And so uh, people who have a similar interest to mine, I welcome the participation. I plan on doing the same audit that I did last year, go talk to Sue in assessing, find out what, uh, what really uh, happened, uh, talk with my good friend Craig Friedrich about how we can look at the different ways and anybody else who wants to participate in that. The other thing is affordable housing initiatives. Mm -hmm. I think that we tried, it wasn't very successful, the effort that was, uh, 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 and, but yet we have the contacts with Avesta, the Bessie Commons uh, owner. Uh, we have the ability to do a, a affordable housing projects and do them well. But I just think we need a little bit more of a push 
from the seven of us uh, to do that. So anyone who's interested in that, certainly I'm, I'm going to be uh, looking at that. Uh, so thank you. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that I'm looking forward to you know a new group of people every year. You've got new personalities, whatever to work with. So um, we will figure out how we're all going to work together. Um, and on behalf of uh, the people of the town of Scarborough, um, I will be in Augusta tomorrow for the Maine Municipal Legislative Policy mm -hmm. Committee, and I have a whole pack in here, guys, that you're really going to like. <laughs> a few things that hopefully we uh, can get moved forward to do with property tax relief and restoration of municipal revenue sharing. There are some things with senior property tax, right. um, so I will report back on that next week. Um, yeah, so just a couple things. Uh, one, I just want to reflect quickly on um, the vote this evening because I, I do think this is a monumental uh, decision that has been made, um, but it's an ongoing commitment, and um, I don't want, you know, I know folks, there's a lot of folks on both sides feeling, you know, um, I, I guess, uh, let me just back that up. I would love to see our town work towards not having sides and having more conversations um, uh, about all issues, including this one. Um, this isn't, you know, just because we passed it tonight, it's not done and, and gone and buried. It's going to be an ongoing living dynamic process. So uh, continually to give feedback, continue the conversations, and um, I think we can best support the development team to hit that home run because that's what we really need to happen at this point. That's going to make it the best situation for everybody. Um, the second thing I wanted to just touch on was um, just thinking about the holidays. Uh, when I was a teacher, it was really evident to me in the classroom how stressful a time of year this can be, as happy as it is, and as much as we love the lights and the music. Um, for many people, it's the exact opposite of happy. And uh, so if you have a chance to get out there and volunteer, um, do something good for someone else. Uh, I know I, I spent my Thanksgiving serving 160 seniors uh, in Portland, and it was one of the best Thanksgivings I've ever had. Mm -hmm. So um, just be mindful of the people, you know, who are rushing and cutting you off in line. You don't know what's going on in their world, and uh, let's be a little bit patient. And yeah, that's it. Councilor Johnson? Uh, so I'd like to start off just first, I mean, all the other counselors here, you guys have been tremendous. I feel um, I've had meetings or phone calls or interact. Sean and I do more so our interaction right here, but <laughs> um, it's just been very refreshing. I think everybody's been very willing to give me insight and been incredibly respectful of me, so I appreciate the, the good start. Um, I know I have a ton to learn, so now that today is over, so to speak, I will. <laughs> you breathe um, again? Yes, yeah, right. Um, and I just, I just second what Katie Foley just said. I think. Um, I personally, I hope this goes incredibly well for the Downs. I mean, I, I am sold on everything that's happening there. So I, I think it's our responsibility to, to do everything we can to make it as successful as humanly possible. And I am on board. So. Thank you. Um, I owe you a uh, return. Um, I sent you an email about committee assignments. Um, and so I do apologize for not responding. Oh, I no should problem. find out. I'm hoping um, I have to be in Augusta all day tomorrow. Um, <laughs> Uh, not a, duties have not officially started until next week, so I did want to mention that I may not be here next Wednesday. Um, not next week. Yeah, next week. Yes, yeah, next, next December fifth, um, yeah. because that is swearing in day. Yep. And so uh, the kind of the the funny story behind that is that two years ago the governor actually canceled the swearing in about an hour before mm -hmm. the swearing in ceremony, and everyone had to come back. And so um, whether I need to stay up there or not to be prepared for that, um, so um, I, I will try to be here because um, I made that promise. Um, and then I'll get in touch with you because I okay. will find out my committee assignments through the state within the next week or so, I'm hoping. Great. Um, second is, um, you know, just a recap uh, tonight. You know, we're in the season of Thanksgiving, no matter what religion you are, no matter who you are, it's just across the board. And I really hope that people do sit back and um, are thankful for the community that we live in and for the volunteers that step forward and serve on the boards. and. Uh, contribute um, to the growth of the community uh, through the conversations and dialogues. I'm really proud of the action that we've taken tonight. Um, and I think, if anything, it's proof that um, our decisions don't need to be seven to zero. Right. Um, and they don't need to always be um, 
four to three, but there are some things that we're going to have philosophical or ideological disagreements on, um, and it's about the conversations that we have and being able to walk away. So um, I know I heard the developer say, you know, he was hoping for a seven to zero. I think that everyone does, but um, in, a, in a democracy or in our form of government, it's, uh, it's a majority vote and it's four to three. And I think that the community's reaction to this is going to be much different than um, other contentious growth management issues that have happened in the town. I was thinking of uh, particularly like the Great American Neighborhood mm -hmm. um, and uh, what happened when that was a six to one vote um, in favor of that. Um, and it was the, um, the people who didn't want it that actually overturned it. So um, I, I'm very happy. I, I'm really excited. I, you know, I'm one of those people that um, I think big first and then I, I go in and I either try to disprove it uh, to make sure I made the right decision by supporting something um, or I find more evidence about and I think that as we went along in this process I just kept hearing more and more <coughs> concrete evidence that this was the right move for us to be able to move forward with the risk ab absolutely um, there's risk in everything that we do mm -hmm. there's a risk when you wake up in the morning and go walk across the street to investments that you make um, and I think that uh, Katie Foley made it, um, a very important comment and um, you know in grad school first thing they teach you is uh, in the MBA program is that in order to make money you have to invest money and that's a risk um, and that's what we've done tonight and I think that we have a lot of work to do and due diligence um, along the way and I really believe that the developer that um, is moving this forward is going to be a partnership and no matter what we ask for going forward and I'm really excited about that um, and so just want to say thank you to everybody um, since it is a season of Thanksgiving because uh, I'm feeling very blessed. And I guess with that, I'll kind of conclude. I first want to kind of thank the Council Handler, you know, Council Johnson. You guys have come in. You've done a ton of work, as you guys have <laughs> talked about. You, you've spent out, countless hours this. trying to get up to speed and really appreciate that. And your comments and suggestions actually ended up you know, having some impact mm -hmm. on the outcome. So yeah. thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. Special kudos to you from visiting us from Ireland. <laughs> You're going to be spending a lot of time on a plane. Um, and I'm encouraged too. I'm, you know, I, I, I was glad we had the conversation tonight. I think actually it was a good back and forth on a lot of different issues. So with that, I look forward to, we've got a lot of work to do this year. So look forward to getting started. So thank you, everybody. <clears throat> Move to with adjourn. that, is it time to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Thank you. I win. I win. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Vacation. Vacation.